day to you. This is Anna Galactic bringing you another science presentation. Today we're going to cover a slightly different topic. In fact, in one sense, as different as you could get from science. How important is it? What are the topics that are generally covered in religion? We all know what it is. The problem is living through it. We are supposed to communicate and we are here to help each other. You can give away all your money, but if you have not love, you are just wasting your time. Well, if you're a miser, that is fucking good news, isn't it? I use the word fuck a lot when I'm emotional. That helps me keep my voice down. And most people are on the edge. And not many people have much to look forward to. The most grandiose lie system of all time has been developed, so it is very easy to get caught up in a system. Jesus is the name used in America, already showing complete disrespect for the man, certainly from a scientific, rational, or even cultural point of view. His name is Yeshua, and the other man's name is Ibrahim, Abraham whose original name was Abram. So, what is the truth about religion? Well, there is this very peculiar man named Yeshua, of whom it is said that he sacrificed his life in order to save other lives. Yeshua is the only man who ever came back from the dead, but nobody ever tells you what happened next. Certainly the Jews don't give a you-know-what, that no religion regards this man correctly. It's because when men get together over anything, they form a group mind. It will be compromised, and then it will be turned ass backwards around to bite the humans in the ass. That's called politics, except it talks about things like God and Jesus. But they're not actually serious. They're trying to make you become serious to what they want. That's why they always collect money. Have you ever noticed that? Every religion needs money. Well, everyone needs money, don't they? Okay. And a, one of the most unusual comedians that I have ever encountered. Why do I bring up the name of a modern and recently deceased comedian? And Larry King is about the gruffest interviewer. Uh, he's made a name for himself. I like Larry King. I like everyone who does what they say they're going to do. It's my fault if I'm watching him. Well, you're part of the entertainment industry when you do that. And here's one reason I know about Norm McDonald and his interview with Larry King, which brought out both sides of religion perfectly. I've never seen it done better to give a clear division between what is religion or irreligion. Is there any difference? Well, the way I found out about Norm MacDonald was from Dave Chappelle. And Dave Chappelle, an extraordinary thinker and a very deeply feeling man, and he's honest and he's brave. And he's human. And he may or may not have an opinion about God. I actually am not sure. But I really don't care what anybody says about God. Uh, because I already know it's not going to impress me at all. Okay? So, why would Dave Chappelle mention Norm MacDonald? So here is an interesting man who speaks with Larry King about religion and comes out because Larry, of course, would ask Norm MacDonald about his Christianity because it that's what the viewership wants. And the viewership, you just have to think of it as being neutral, but you know perfectly well they want Larry to tear this man a new asshole. Because everybody hates Christians in America now, for very good reasons. But if you're going to do that, you just might as well hate everybody. And I just told you the reason why. So let me just remind you, 
all religion is politics. And if you don't know what politics is, or you think it's, there's something good in politics, then you need to go to the voting booth. Worthless. You will be a worthless human being. So, what did Larry King have to ask Norm MacDonald? The most difficult point to get to is what is religion? Well, you know where the focus of the matter is. You know why it's not God? It's because nobody has ever seen God. And what Yeshua said is you can't see God. You never will see God. So what is the point? The point is death. It's you're going to oblivion. According to the popular superstition, we are destined for the stars. And currently it's obvious that we can't get there and we're unfit to go anywhere. The entire planet, in most people's humble opinion when they're honest, should just be exterminated. But in order to understand what the good part is, you have to know what the penalty is. Because the penalty erases the good part. This earth could have been destroyed in the year 1960. I'm sure that you're at least vaguely aware of the fact that there are enough thermonuclear weapons on the planet to wipe it out several times over. It would only take a day or two. And then the natural selectionists have the ideal answer. It's superstitious though. It's nothing. It's no value whatsoever. What is this? What is going on? Well, scientifically, it's extremely complex. Biologically, we're extremely complex creatures. Do you understand that DNA is beyond belief complex? But just to say that it's complex is not enough. It's also balanced. This is the most difficult question that a human being can face. Obviously, there's a conflict between death and love. So, if there were going to be a rational answer, how would you approach that? Philosophers, of course, try to share their opinion. Religion goes a bit farther. We have a rational mind, but we also have an extremely powerful emotional system dominated by love. The ancient peoples of all over the world were fully acquainted with the phenomenon of love. What is it if it has nothing to do with logic? We as scientists pride ourselves on our logic. That's because it's one of the two systems that we're blueprinted with. We have a logical system that matches the universe, but it has nothing to do with joy and love. It also has nothing to do with pain and death and, and oblivion. It just is what it is while we're here. You can say that equally of love difficult to define. Well, so's death. Unless you just want to just say, well, that's it. That's actually illogical to say that. And that can be proved. Because your lights are going out, Charlie. You're going to where no one's ever going to hear from you again. And you yourself will not know anything. And you'll be exactly as you were before you existed. Actually, it's not strictly speaking true, not even physically. Because any conscious being, including a human, has a definite origin in the physical universe, which goes beyond your parents and grandparents all the way back to the beginning of humanity. That's why it's such a critical question to know where humanity comes from. Where does the human race come from? To find that out, you learn that you have to find out where the ecology came from, because humans cannot exist without this ecology. So they were created at the same time. Now, whether it would just spontaneously amalgamated itself into its present condition is obviously a design. So there's an interesting aspect, and that's a major step in the life of a full-grown man. You have to be a mature man to face this. Because it's very interesting, a human is not just a 30-year-old person, and that's when you're you is between the age of 20 and 50, or 14 and 74, 
No, you're all of it. You're all the way back to when the sperm and the egg conjoined. A lot of jokes are made about that because it has to do with sex. But you have to face the facts at some point. Which one were you? You might think of this as kind of like the biological quantum paradox. You're partly in the ovum and you're partly in the sperm. And then what happens is, is that t the two double strands, each one drops one of, I'm using the fuck fingers because this has to do with fucking. So accept that. I'm a scientist and I'm allowed to do this. I told you this isn't for children. But they, there's a double strand in the ovum and a double strand of DNA in the sperm. And then each one drops one strand and then recombines the two strands. So that's where you come from. It's a recursion. Where did the sperm come from? And where did the ovum come from? They came from your parents, who also were formed by the same method. Going back in time, it's a binary tree, as you well know. Where does that begin? Logically, it begins at the first two humans. Well, that has been noted since the beginning of time, and that's the beginning of religion. You can trace back humanity to the first two humans. And Charles Darwin literally had n no idea what he was talking about, and he admitted it, okay? So forget Darwinianism. We're talking about reality now. There were two original human beings even in the evolutionary theory, there had to be two original human beings. The two proto-humans who are not quite human, not quite, but the next generation will be, they've got to make two. So whatever happened in any sequence, there had to be two humans at the beginning, a male and a female. We would have to make more than two, otherwise there would just always be two. <laughs> About 16 billion humans have lived. There are 8 billion humans alive right now, and that's half of the number that have ever lived. But for the size of the creature that we are, and the complexity and the uniqueness, we're, there's only one species of human. Everything else, there's a... The spectrum of birds, there's a spectrum of finches. You can check out any kind of fish. There's more than one kind of mackerel. There's more than one kind of crow. No matter how you look at it, humans are big, complex, and unique. So we are a separate creation. Don't let that word throw you. We're a separate creation. I'm leaving that purposely undefined except in the obvious logical sense of whatever you think that means. Okay? So now we go back and just trace it back. How long have humans been here? Well, no more than 10,000 years. You could stretch it. Humans might have been here as long as 20,000 years. But actually, there's an event that occurred that cut off everything. <laughs> and that's in Wikipedia. It's perfectly well known to science. And the reason you've never heard of it is due to some machinations down here having to do with religion and politics. You as an American are only allowed to know of the tiniest slice of knowledge that is actually known by humanity with a tiny window open to your rational intellect that you're on your own now. If you want to find out your origins scientifically, logically, so that you know it, that you know that you're not guessing, you're on your own. So this is extrapolating logically back to where you come from. This is about you. Any individual has to do this on their own. And that raises an interesting point to throw into the pot. We're trying to get more and more information into the question that is, what is religion? And you know this deals with the deepest, deadliest, most combative, most 
paralyzing, infuriating, just malignant emotions are generated by this subject. Not here. You can tell I'm acting out some emotion to keep you on track. But logically speaking, when those two strands recombine, because when they rewind into that double spiral to begin the meiotic process to generate a new creature, you come from, first of all, that recombinant two strands of semiotic DNA. All right? And then that gestates inside the woman's body for about 10 moons, for about eight to nine months. And then out comes another human. That has never changed, of course. Nothing in the ecology has ever changed. Nothing in the human race has ever changed. It looks like the species descended from each other and came from a common ancestor. It looks like the sun goes around the earth. Only an idiot would question that if you don't actually already know the answer. You know that it's due to the spinning of the earth. It simply took a long time to figure that out. It also took a long time to figure out where humans come from. The ancients did know. What did they know about it? They knew it was mysterious. And then one day, the Darwinism became popular. It became politically correct to just decide the matter. So to get rid of religion, religion has a history of tyranny. So the tyranny of religion was replaced with a more advanced tyranny. And that's all that happened because of politics. Yeah, and you can trace that back through all the religious records and the records of man that just disappears into the mists of ancient time. Nothing on this earth has ever changed in terms of the structure. So I think you see where this is leading. In order to trace the origin of a system this fantastically complex, it can be proved that this ecology was designed. And that's a very significant fact. You are on your own. If you're ever going to get an answer for the questions that you need to have answered for you, you're going to have to do it yourself. You literally can't believe anybody else. Religion cannot be shared in terms of getting the truth because then you're just believing whatever the dogma is. You will be fooled. You will not get the answers that you want from religion. You have to find it out for yourself. And another aspect is, is that you won't be able to share it. And if you think that maybe Christianity disproves what I'm saying, nobody knows more about Christianity than I do. So these are the logical facts that lead to a logical conclusion using one of the two onboard systems that we were blueprinted with. So this becomes holistic, the process of understanding, and it is work. You, and this is why there's a stigma about thinking that you're a brainiac or a know-it-all. No, you're working hard. In America, what we say is, you're working your ass off. You're working your mind up. You're trying to use your mind the way it was intended to be used. There's a system for that. It's called scientific rational logic. And it works. There's a problem because of the way men use anything. The group mind eventually gets hold of anything. It's like having the godfather on your block. Once the mafia moves in, you're going to become part of the mafia. You can't talk back to the mafia. They'll take over anything that they want, and you can't talk back to the mafia. That's your government. That's your religion. Well, now you know you can start thinking to yourself if you haven't thought already. What about science? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the group mind of man, sometimes called Satan, by the way, the religious name for this huge group mind of men, 
when they get together and all of a sudden there are wars? There are wars because there are groups of men. That's why there's warfare. Yeshua was not murdered by an assassin. Yeshua was murdered by a group mind. And he used the word Satan. And it gets spooky because he had 12 chosen men. This is a very good example, which you can accept for any number of reasons. He's an historical figure, so at least take this metaphorically. He said, it's on record, he chose 12 men. And he looked them all right in the face as uh, days before he was betrayed. And one of you is a devil, that is, one of you is a traitor. He's saying that he chose his own murderer. But when it came time for Judas, the murderer, to betray Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus, actually the record says that Satan entered into him. Now you may think that that's just hocus pocus spooky wooky. Well, you're going to be a retard for the rest of your life until it's over. And then we'll not have to worry about you at all. Because you didn't make it. So... <laughs> So what actually Yeshua was saying was, is that it's all arranged. It's all fixed. Your death is fixed. The death of your puppies, the death of the babies, people being tortured, being boiled in oil, just the horrors of war that go on and on and on to this day, certainly in Ukraine. But actually, if you check, everywhere. It's never relented. It's pure evil. This planet is hell. Now that's just one side. What the answer that you and I want as humans is, why do this at all? Why, why even be here? You're going to oblivion. It's the worst possible situation already. Going to the grave is actually a relief. As it said in the Green Mile, that big black guy who had supernatural healing powers, he said, you're doing me a favor by killing me because after what I've seen here, it's like having ground glass in my brain. He was looking forward to death because it's just for rest. If you're being tortured and you don't have a cyanide capsule in your tooth, You'll wish that you had, because there are some things worse than death. Life is worse than death. Well, the only thing worse than death is life. But you know that that's not true. How do you know it's not true? Because it's an irrational thing to say. This complexity was designed, and that is the proof of superintelligence. The problem then comes is that men get hold of the idea, they call it God, and then form a political... Before the bodies even have time to rot, the first thing that you notice on the battlefield is an overwhelming stench of shit. You like that? You think that's good? Then you're a politician. Or you're a religious fanatic. The biggest religious fanatics who've ever lived are American Protestants. And the only reason I say that is to equalize the playing field. Incomprehensibly irrational. That monkeys at least have an excuse to attack and kill each other. Humans have no excuse to do that. But that's not what you're told in school. That's not what your political leaders tell you. And it's not what your religious leaders tell you. Your scientists won't deny that either. You're designed to be a murderer. You're puppies. You have to defend yourself against the Hun, the infidel, the ones that are not doing what we want to do, which is supposedly democracy. Are you an idiot? It's business as usual under a new name. Insoluble irrationality. Unapproachable mania. You might start to think in terms of religion, maybe there's a 
malefic, malevolent being equivalent to God. Well, if you think that, you can go join a church. But I'm here not to confuse you because there is a rational solution. When you weigh the prospect of oblivion and the reality of horror with the fact that you're here, obviously this was meant to be good and went wrong. Something went wrong and cannot be fixed. So what is it that was lost? Is it lost? This will be up to you and has to be up to you. But what happens next is enlightenment. You experience enlightenment. There are many reports of enlightenment from the religions around the world and nobody can tell you what it is. You're going to have to weigh the fact of logical complexity from a rational design against the prospect of oblivion and the reality of horror. And that cannot be done. So you're going to have to make a choice and you're going to have to commit everything that you have to your choice. I'm only talking to those who still believe there might be hope to become enlightened. I'm here to confirm your hope and here's the double-edged sword for that form of answer which is the only correct form. You must logically, rationally choose the designer. Once you do that, you're still stuck with all of your old problems, but you've changed inside. It's that simple. The only thing left for you to do is make a full commitment to rational intelligence that came before you and will be after you and put all of your trust in that truth and then will begin the ride of your life as you discover over and over again that you simply cannot sustain that. It can't be done. The off-scouring of the world is what we're called. If you reach that stage where you've committed, logically, this is logic. It's either that or you're stuck with oblivion and the horror. So you choose design, well, who wouldn't? Well, look around, nobody does. But you might. You might choose the rational course. Well then, <laughs> it is for this reason that that form of enlightenment, the initial stage of enlightenment, is called rebirth. You're reborn. You know why? Because everything starts over. And now you have to figure everything out again, and again, and again. And that's when you're going to find out that you're a sinner. And that you can't make it. It doesn't change anything. Um, that's religion. The secret of religion is, yes, that does change something, but not in you. It changes something in the designer. And if you don't believe that, good luck. This is Anna Galactic bringing you the secrets of the universe. I hoped you appreciated this sermon on the old Sabbath day of Saturday. Being a Bible scholar, I'm tempted to go on for another six hours, but I don't think you could handle it. But I hope you could handle what I said. It's called the good news. There is a way out. But it's going to pull you absolutely in half. I hope you're ready for that. It's good, though, because the choice is the religionists, the politicians, and the scientists. And all three of those are absolutely compromised. There is the designer who is good, and there then is everything else. Good luck. Santa Galactic, keep looking up. That's where Yeshua went, that's where the prophet went, and that's where God said to look. So if you keep looking up at the night sky, just think about rational design and how good it, life is for as long as you can enjoy it. And then good luck with the rest. What'll happen is you'll have another enlightenment, and then you'll have another one, 
and then you'll start having a sequence of enlightenment. This has not happened to me yet, but I know it will. And it doesn't matter if I die in the meantime, because nothing was ever up to me. You see the secret now? Yeah, the designer's pretty, pretty big, pretty powerful, and he's worthy of the name of love. He invented it. Try to, try to overlook everything else, and good luck with that. We'll be back.